Hi everyone, good afternoon and welcome to another episode of the Pink Tarha Reality. I'm here with Janelle Hi. and we're going to talk about Ramadan because it's coming up soon. So what can you share with us? What can you share with them rather, Janelle? Okay, so first and foremost, if you're not new in Riyadh, <laughs> you're probably read or yeah, read our Ramadan entries in the blog. Mm-hmm. So we have their do's and don'ts. And if you're new, then you should watch this. <laughs> yes. First and foremost, no eating or drinking in public, like in yes. public spaces outside where um, Saudis or Muslims can see you because they are fasting during Ramadan and we should respect their sacrifice for their holy month. Yeah, so Ramadan is the holiest month in Islam and basically the fasting happens from sunrise until sunset. So as long as the sun is up, don't bring food outside, especially if you are working with Saudi or Muslim colleagues as well. Uh, at the same time, the uh, the body clock of people in Saudi Arabia changes during Ramadan because everything else is closed during daytime and everything resumes back to life at, after, after the sunset prayer. Yeah, after yeah. The eight- is it the six o'clock? Six, six o'clock, o'clock. The yeah. restaurants start opening. The malls. Well, the malls will be after the last prayer, which is around eight o'clock or seven o'clock. This this time, yeah. And basically, you can see the stores open until like three a.m., four a.m. in the morning, and uh, you can actually go outside at night time and still see a lot of traffic, a lot of people. Yeah. So speaking of those stores, uh, their opening hours change. Uh, like what we said, but I think that most of the groceries, hypermarkets are yeah. open in the morning, they are but open. malls are not. Usually malls open at 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning, but during Ramadan, I think they, they're only open after the 8 o'clock prayer. 8, 8 o'clock prayer, yeah. So you should do all your groceries, I mean groceries, you can do it like usual time, but for shopping, <laughs> you yeah. do it at night, and the malls usually close at around two o'clock in the morning or three o'clock a.m. So like that's shopping during dawn time, only in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> yes. And one thing you can also expect from Ramadan is there are a lot of uh, what they call iftar promotions. So a lot of restaurants and hotel restaurants they offer what they call this iftar, which is this. Uh, meal wherein the Muslims break their fast. But in general, in our experience, the iftars here tend to be very extravagant, luxurious. luxurious Most lots of, of the food. malls have promos for mm-hmm. iftar because it's also sharing like um, sharing the ta- sharing the meal with your friends and families. Yeah. So hotels tend to like really uh, what provide people with very extravagant and luxurious meals. And it's okay. interesting that you know they fast during the day and they eat all these food at night. But there is more to Ramadan than just the fasting. It's also their season of uh, being more charitable. They need to pray more. In fact, uh, they have extended prayers even after the actual last prayer. Mm-hmm. They have what they call the Tawahir, I think, or the Hawir prayers. They also and have what we call Suhoor. It's also their meal time. It's the meal they take before resuming their fasting for the day. So I think that's around 11, 11. to 3 in the morning. <laughs> so before they fast again, before yeah. the sun, before the first prayer of the day, which is around 4 o'clock or 5 in the mm-hmm. morning. They eat. But this year, I'm going to escape from a yes. <laughs> escape, but um, it's my vacation time, so I will be going home to the Philippines the entire June. Yeah. I won't be partaking in any iftar <laughs> dinners and buffets. Unfortunately uh, for me, Reina will be the one to feature all of those oh, for gosh. you guys. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Food. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 we got <laughs> we already got invites to some iftars yeah. um, from restaurants and hotels and good luck in scheduling <laughs> remember that last year i was the one left here yes. to actually endure all those iftars hey, i was there like a little halfway like yeah. a week or a week and a half 
but yeah so wish me luck wish my waistline luck <laughs> and everything else but uh, definitely Ramadan Karim to our readers yes, our Ramadan followers Karim, who everyone. are celebrating Ramadan and to everybody else we just want to say enjoy the iftar enjoy the suhoor offers because it's like one of the things you only experience here in Saudi Arabia I don't really I mean in the Middle East at least and it's quite unique to experience so Ramadan Kareem everyone Ramadan Kareem. bye Just finished our appetizers, appetizers and sorters. Ooh. Those are good. We like the I like the fatouche. I don't know about you guys, but I like that one. Some of it was I'm not usually a fan of sour, but for some reason I can tolerate the sourness of the fatouche a while ago. Okay. Also when it like? comes to Arabic food, I'm not fond of sour food. <laughs> so what did pies. I like? The, the pies are good, and also this one. The hummus with the, the pine nuts yes. and beef. Um, and you pour some olive oil in cheese. it, and it's perfect. Cheese. And also the cheese sticks. I'm sure it's like called something else in Arabic, yeah. but it's cheese sticks for us. So now we're having our main course, and they've served up this delicious looking... Grilled. Smells so yeah. good, and... Mm. They have given us their best sellers like the halabi, which is their signature, signature kebab. Classic kebab. And this one is the veal, uh, what is it? Grilled veal pieces Softer that looks like chicken. chicken. <laughs> and the actual chicken, it's which is the marinated chicken, chicken, grilled chicken. And we have a lot of garlic sauce. It's okay. I need to make one thing clear <laughs> about garlic sauce because a lot of people try to replicate shawarma <laughs> in other countries. This is the key. You don't use mayonnaise, use garlic sauce. And this is very integral in everything you uh, experience in every Arabic restaurant because it just makes everything taste better. From french fries, chicken, to kebabs, garlic sauce will it's make this, or break. Yeah, it's yeah. A Saudi sauce. <laughs> Alright, so we're gonna Okay, go. so we're going to try this. And our review, you have to read it in the blog. <laughs> yeah. For this one. Okay. Come, let's see. Gelato spaghetti or spaghetti gelato. <laughs> so you see um, the like sauce that looks like the meat sauce in a spaghetti is actually strawberry syrup and it also has white and dark chocolate flakes. Hmm. And for me, I ordered this bad baby. It's the exotic spaghetti gelato. Mm -hmm. It looks like a, a pasta, but yeah, it's actually, actually made of like pancit <laughs> yeah. But it's actually made from their vanilla ice cream ice or cream, gelato yeah. strands, and this version has more like of a fruit, exotic fruit flair to it. And we're gonna go and taste it in a bit. So you can really taste the vanilla flavor of the ice cream. Mm. Um, for me, because it has this strawberry syrup right here, it cuts through the sweetness. So. It's mm -hmm. good. I think the base of both are the same. The same, yeah. So it would only uh, the toppings. Yeah, that will make the difference. This is more like chocolate bits. This are more like fresh fruits, you know, yeah. obviously. Activities, almost like a concert, almost like a rave party. Unfortunately, I'm by myself. My friend Drew is somewhere where they're running already. I just stopped to 
film this short video for a while. So as you can see, we have lots of activities for women. Only they're done in fairly far-flung places and it's very, very secured. Either way, having fun. Good night, guys. Bye!